The solar system is an amazing system with many interesting planets, moons, dwarf planets, and much more. In this part, I will be explaining the basics of these amazing celestial objects in the inner part of our star system. Enjoy! The Celestial Bodies of Our Solar System Let's start off with introducing the celestial bodies that are in our solar system. Firstly, we have the larger ones, such as the planets. There are eight planets in our solar system, which are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Planets are celestial objects that orbit a star, have enough gravity to become a ball, and have cleared their orbits from annoying asteroids or other planets. They are categorized into three groups, the terrestrial planets, the gas giants, and ice giants. Next, we have the moons that orbit those planets. A moon is a natural satellite of a celestial body, like a planet or dwarf planet. Next are the dwarf planets. Dwarf planets are smaller versions of planets that are too big to be considered asteroids, but too small to count as planets. They are objects that have yet to clear their orbit from smaller objects like asteroids, comets, or even other dwarf planets. And lastly, we have the asteroids and comets. They are debris left over from the formation of the solar system that didn't become big enough to be planets or dwarf planets. Now that we've introduced the objects I'll be explaining today, let's get to know them! The Sun Let's start off with the center of our solar system, the Sun. The Sun is a G-type main sequence star and is the center of our solar system. The Sun is mainly made of hydrogen and helium, with some trace elements in a plasma state. It has a diameter of 1,391,400 kilometers, or about 109 times the diameter of Earth. The Sun contains 99.8% the mass of the entire solar system. For comparison, Jupiter, the most massive planet in our solar system, only represents 0.1% of the mass of the entire solar system. It has a surface temperature of over 5,700 Kelvin and is powered by nuclear fusion happening in its core. Due to the Sun's immense power, all the planets in the solar system are able to receive light and warmth. The Sun isn't always kind to us though. Sometimes it releases powerful bursts of intense high energy radiation and charged particles known as solar flares. But we all have to thank the Sun for keeping all the planets together with its powerful gravity. Mercury Mercury is the first planet in the solar system and is the closest planet to the Sun. Mercury's diameter is only 4,879 kilometers, making it the smallest planet in the solar system. It is made of 70% metallic stuff and 30% silicates, making it the second most dense planet in the solar system, after Earth. Mercury is the most cratered planet in the solar system. Its surface is completely covered in craters. Since Mercury barely has an atmosphere, any craters that form will not erode away over time. Another effect of having no atmosphere is that the day and night side of Mercury has a drastic temperature difference. The day side can reach temperatures of up to 430 degrees Celsius, meanwhile the night side can reach temperatures of negative 180 degrees Celsius. Mercury orbits the Sun at a distance of around 0.4 AU or 57.9 million kilometers. With such a small orbit, it only takes 88 days to revolve around the Sun once. Meanwhile, it takes 59 days to rotate once. It has no moons. Venus Venus is the next planet to the Sun. Despite it being the second planet to the Sun, Venus is actually the hottest planet in our solar system. This is due to Venus having a thick atmosphere that traps heat, one that is over 90 times thicker than Earth's. Venus has a diameter of 12,104 kilometers, which is about the same size as Earth. Venus orbits the Sun at around 0.72 AU, or 108 million kilometers. It takes Venus 243 Earth days to rotate once on its axis, meanwhile taking 225 Earth days to orbit the Sun once. Also, Venus spins in the opposite way of every other planet spin. Venus is sometimes called Earth's twin sister for a couple of reasons. Firstly, they both have roughly the same size, density, mass, and gravity. Secondly, Venus and Earth formed in the same inner region of the solar system, and they're all mainly composed of the same stuff. And third, they both have weather and rain. But the similarities end there. Because, unlike Earth, Venus is basically hell. It has a temperature of over 460 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. That thick atmosphere that makes the planet extremely hot is made of toxic carbon dioxide and is also very dense and heavy, making the atmospheric pressure there 92 times what we would feel on Earth at sea level, which would also immediately crush you or any spacecraft we try landing there. 
Also, the rain I mentioned earlier isn't made of water. It's made of very hot and acidic sulfuric acid. So yeah, Venus is basically hell. Don't visit her. Venus is also known to have volcanoes. Tons of them. Over 1,600 major volcanoes or volcanic features that are known, and possibly over 100,000 smaller ones. Venus has no moons. Earth. The third planet from the sun is Earth, our beautiful home. Earth has a diameter of 12,742 kilometers. One year on Earth, unsurprisingly, lasts one year, or 365 days. And one day on Earth lasts 23 hours and 56 minutes, which we rounded up to 24 hours. Earth's semi-major axis is one astronomical unit, or around 150 million kilometers. It has a pretty thick atmosphere that we can breathe and oceans that cover over 70% of its surface. Earth also has something no other planet has. Life. Earth is the only planet in the universe that we know has life so far. Around the time the oceans formed, which was 4.4 billion to 3.8 billion years ago, the first life forms emerged. Earth also still has a warm interior, which is pretty rare among other rocky planets in our solar system. This warm interior is what generates the strong magnetic field that protects us from solar winds, and the plate tectonics that keep on renewing the surface of the Earth, makes volcanoes, and shapes the surface of the Earth. Earth has one moon named the Moon, or Luna. Luna has a diameter of 3,475 kilometers and orbits Earth at a distance of 384,400 kilometers every 27.3 days. Luna was born from a collision between the Earth and another object around half its size that happened 4.5 billion years ago in the early solar system. Luna is responsible for making our tides, maintaining our stable axial tilt, and 24-hour long days. Luna also has these darker spots on her known as seas. They are believed to have been ancient seas of lava from her formation that have long since cooled off and became smooth basalt. Another fun fact about Luna is that she's slowly drifting away from us at a rate of 1.5 inches or 3.78 centimeters per year! But don't worry, unlike what I said in my other video, she won't slowly abandon us in 5 billion years, leaving us moonless forever. Instead, she will stick around with the Earth until the sun dies, or will get consumed by the red giant sun along with Earth. True besties stick together until the end! Mars The planet after Earth is Mars, the fourth planet from the sun. Mars has a diameter of 6,779 kilometers, around half of Earth's. It orbits the sun at a distance of 1.5 astronomical units or 228 million kilometers. Mars is often called the red planet for appearing reddish in color from a distance. But from a closer view, Mars is actually more of a butterscotch color. This color is due to rusty atmospheric dust and the Martian regolith that is made of rust. A Martian day is similar to an Earth day, lasting 24 hours and 37 minutes. Meanwhile, a Martian year lasts 687 Earth days or roughly 670 Mars days. Mars is believed to have once had a huge ocean of water, just like Earth in the past. But around 4.1 billion years ago, Mars's interior cooled down too much, and its magnetic field died. Once its magnetic field died, the powerful solar winds blasted away Mars's atmosphere and water, leaving it desolate and barren. Mars has two moons named Phobos and Deimos. Their origins are unknown, but we have some good guesses. The first theory says that they're both captured asteroids that were flown from the asteroid belt by Jupiter and captured by Mars around 1 to 2.7 billion years ago. The second theory says that they are debris left over from forming Mars that remained in orbit and slowly accreted over time. The third theory says that they are remains of a larger moon that once orbited Mars. Phobos orbits 9,377 kilometers from Mars, meanwhile Deimos orbits 23,460 kilometers from Mars. Asteroids and the Asteroid Belt Asteroids are the debris left over from forming the planets. Most asteroids are found in the Asteroid Belt, but they can be found anywhere in the solar system, even on Earth-crossing paths. Usually, asteroids are relatively small objects, but some can be hundreds or even a thousand kilometers in diameter. For example, Ceres, Vesta, Pallas, and Hygieia. But thankfully, most of them are only a couple tens of kilometers in diameter, and those ones rarely cross Earth. Most near-Earth asteroids are only a couple hundreds of meters, a common misconception about asteroids is that they're in these densely packed fields of asteroids, but in reality, they're usually over 900,000 kilometers apart from each other. Another misconception about asteroids is that they're solid rocks, but in actuality, the smaller ones usually have a surface of loosely held together gravel that feels more like those ball pits you can find in playgrounds. The larger ones are usually solid though. Also, some asteroids can have moons! For example, Ida. Ida is a large asteroid in the asteroid belt that has a little moon orbiting around it named Dactyl. Another example is Didymos. Didymos has a moon named Dimorphos. 
You may know Dimorphos as the target of the DART mission as they did a couple years ago. One asteroid decided that moons wasn't enough and decided to get pretty rings. Chariklo is a centaur with a diameter of approximately 250 kilometers. The ring system is pretty bright and consists of two narrow bands separated by a relatively small gap. The origin of the rings is still unknown, but there are some pretty good theories. Like an impact on Charlie Klo, a collision between pre-existing moons, or even material released from Charlie Klo's icy surface. Some asteroids are unlucky enough to become moons of massive gas giants by getting gravitationally captured. Ceres Ceres is the first dwarf planet from the Sun! It orbits in the asteroid belt with an average distance from the Sun of 2.8 AU or 413 million kilometers. Ceres is the largest and most massive object in the asteroid belt, making up about a third of the mass of the entire asteroid belt it lives in, and having a diameter of a little under 1,000 kilometers. It takes Ceres 4.6 years to orbit the Sun and 9 hours to complete a rotation. Ceres is made of a quarter water ice and three quarters rocket material, and some yummy salt I'd like to eat. Ceres is thought to have cryovolcanoes and grows a new one every 50 million years on average. Ceres was actually thought to be a planet back in the 1800s when it was discovered. Ceres was finally reclassified as an asteroid in 1851, along with the other bodies they found in the belt. Then, in 2006, Ceres was reclassified again to be a dwarf planet along with the other dwarf planets that we know today. Ceres doesn't have a moon. So, that wraps up this part! I hope you've enjoyed my explanation of the inner part of the wonderful system we live in! By the way, this video only covers some of the basics of the inner solar system. In reality, the solar system is much more complex and interesting than what I've talked about in this video, and there are plenty more mysteries we still have yet to uncover. Anyway, that's all for now. See you in the next part!